<laughs> Her name is Layla Erebar. Embarrassing stories. We all have those embarrassing stories that our family loves to tell. And years later, they still haunt us. After this, hopefully you'll be entertained and able to tell the embarrassing story that the Raybar family loves to tell. The quintessential family summer vacation. What did you do? Did your family road trip? Did you go swimming? My story begins the summer before sixth grade when we were living in Decatur, Alabama. Every year without fail, my family would pack us three kids in the back of their tan GMC van and we'd make the hot, sweaty, stick to your mean sister road trip across the state to the beach. My dad worked really long and hard hours, so on his time off, he wanted to do nothing more than to lay on the beach. He didn't want to play putt-putt or do any of the touristy things that us kids were dying to do. It was a week spent under the sun with our skin turning lobster red and then tan, building sand castles and eating gritty mustard and lunch meat sandwiches from the cooler, followed by sandy caffeine-free Cokes. One of the things my dad liked to do to break up the monotony was to go to a really nice restaurant. My dad was a foodie before that was a word. And out of this, he raised a couple of foodie kids. Let me set the scene for you. It's six o'clock at night and we arrive at this marina and above the marina is this restaurant with spectacular waterfront views. This is no ordinary marina. At this marina, there is nothing less than yacht stock there. I'm talking yachts bigger than most people's homes. And who owns this restaurant? Well, none other than the celebrity chef, Paul Prudhomme. He's famous for his spice seasonings, cookbooks, restaurants, and television appearances. And for my dad, this was like going to the Super Bowl. So you can imagine this is a really crowded, famous spot. And it takes an incredibly long time for us to get a table. Around 8 o'clock at night, we're finally seated. Around 9 o'clock, they take our order. At 9.30, we still haven't eaten. My brother, sister, and I are doing everything we can with heads nodding to fight off sleep. We've had a long day of playing in the sun. We're tired and we're hungry. And then all of a sudden, I seem to notice something. I'm leaning, and I can't figure out what's happening. So I run through my mental checklist. Am I sleeping? I don't know. Am I dreaming? Wait, am I dreaming? Am I, am I clothed? Am I naked? Do I have clothes on? What's happening here? And the next thing I know, I find myself going, ah! but not too loudly. This is a nice restaurant after all. So my right shoulder and right side of my body makes contact with the floor, which is followed by incredible laughter. All these diners were drunk. They'd been waiting forever for their food. I'm so embarrassed. I am looking for my chair. And someone comes running over and they try to right my chair and the leg of my chair is just broken in half. The chair won't stand up, and there's no chair. So finally, someone brings over a chair, and I sit down. And the last cry of, hey, little girl, do that fancy trick again, finally stops. You know, it's funnier the 50th time. So what does my family do? No, they don't ask, are you OK? My family laughs and laughs, and they cry as they laugh, and finally they say to me, hey, Layla, why didn't you just jump up when you felt yourself going over? And I made myself small, and I said to them, I thought I was dreaming, and I was trying to make sure that I had clothes on. <laughs> so that's the story my family loves to tell about how I broke the chair at Chef Prudhomme's restaurant 
And for the foodies and the sports fans alike, what was it like? Well, it wasn't worth the prizes. It wasn't worth that wait. And for my poor foodie dad, it was the, like the Broncos losing the Super Bowl. Thank you.